this is true. Krishna, in his mood as a child, does not want to be punished at all. So he says, oh, no, Maya, I've never eaten dirt. I've not eaten dirt at all. But Mother Jashoda is very clever. And she knows that Krishna has a tendency to lie. And so she grabs him and says, yes, I know that you have eaten dirt. So show me your mouth. Now, would Krishna lie? Shri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that although he's the supreme truth, his lying is the natural activity of a young child. And so there's no fault in this. Krishna is in his lila as a child. Shri Madhavatam says, Satyam Param Dimahe. That Krishna, everything he says is true. So how do you reconcile that? On the bus on the way here, Vasananda uh, Prabhu gave a very beautiful description of the one part of a commentary by Balabacharya. And when Krishna said, no, I have not eaten dirt, this is Naham. And Naham in Sanskrit, if you combine it in a certain way, means the entire universe. And he's saying, I have the entire universe in my belly. What? You have to speak of eating a little dirt. I can eat the entire universe. So he didn't actually lie, he confessed. But in any case, um, to preserve the Leela, he's sitting like a small child, and he's thinking, oh, I don't want to be punished. And so Mother Kishore listen to his mouth. And when she looks at his mouth, all of a sudden, Krishna's Ija Shakti. You know what Ija Shakti is? Ija Shakti is focus. Krishna has the ability, whenever he desires, it becomes manifest. And his unlimited numbers of internal potencies are always competing to serve him. So, when he's thinking, I don't want to be punished by Mother Jashoda, this Aishvarya Shakti automatically begins to manifest. And when Mother Jashoda looks into his mouth, what does she see? She sees into his belly the entire Brahmanda. That means the entire universe. And within that universe, he found all kinds of living entities, mountains, all the different varieties of creation, and its different stages, both ego, the different senses, the sense objects, wind, air, fire, everything that could be possibly conceived, even time itself, karma, reactions to all living entities. Sometimes she saw all of that. And then she saw herself as well, sitting with Krishna in the middle of him. It was an astonishing sight, a sight that is rare and generally reserved for those in the mood of Aishwarya Bhav who worship Krishna and Akhla. So, what was the effect on Mother Jashoda? Mother Jashoda has purified Sarya Prane, but being exposed to this vision, what happened? She became astonished. She became stunned. And she also forgot that she was in the middle of punishing Krishna. So, she begins to think, what am I doing here? Am I cheating? Hey! 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 Be quiet! Be quiet! That's a little better. Come on, I'm trying to do how I can die here. I can't even hear myself speak.
So here we find ourselves uh, by the mercy of Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Uh, on this Rajamata of Rekha, we've come to Nanda Gokul at the house of Nanda Maharaj, Nanda Bhavan, where the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna, who is eternally known as Nanda Nanda, Yashoda Nanda, here is his very place where he took his birth, his Janma. Uh, actually, in Srimad Bhagavatam, the story is narrated how Krishna appeared in the prison house of Kamsa as the son of Vasudeva Devaki. And he is also known as Vasudeva Nandana and Devaki Nandana. But actually, our charges have explained that Sri Krishna, he himself, Swayam Bhagavan Krishna, is only eternally known as the son of Nanda and Yashoda and no one else. So here, this place is the place of the actual birth of Lord Krishna. We were here from the womb of Mother Yashoda. But in, in, the, in the palace of Kamsa, in the prison house of Kamsa, there, how did Krishna appear? He did not appear as a little baby child. There he appeared with us, like 16 years old, effulgent, wearing golden crowns and jewels, all paraphernalia, and he appeared in his four-armed Vishnu form. And he spoke to Vasudeva and Devaki, and they offered their prayers to him very, with great awe and reverence, because, as Tirtha Maharaj told, that is Aishwari Bhumi, it is mixed with awe and reverence. But here, in Nanda, Baba, in Gokul, the original Lord appeared directly from the womb of Mother Yashoda. Therefore, this is his place of Janma, birth. And the other place is his place of manifestation. So, the residents of Raja Vrindavan, all the Gopas and Gopis, uh, they witnessed with their own eyes when Krishna appeared, when he was born on that evening at midnight, just at the same time when uh, in uh, the palace of Kamsa, Krishna appeared as Vasudev Krishna there. So the story of Sri Bhagavatam is explaining how Vasudev was told by Krishna that he should carry him across the river Jamuna and there he should replace, he should place Krishna next to Mother Yashoda who has just given birth to a female child. So Vasudev, by the mystic potency of Yoga Maya, was able to be free from the shackles in the prison of Kamsa, and the huge iron doors miraculously opened, and all the guards who were guarding fell asleep. And Vasudev, on that dark night, uh, he was able to cross the river Jamuna, carrying Krishna in a basket. And as the waves of, as Krishna came across the Jamuna, oh, the waves of the Jamuna rose up, because Jamuna Devi is eternally the Saki of Krishna, so she wanted to touch with her waves the lotus feet of Krishna. And for a single moment, Krishna slipped into the waves of the Jamuna, and immediately Vasudev picked him up again. Then Krishna was brought across the Jamuna River, and Vasudev came here to Gokul Mahatma, which is, as you can see, not so far from Mathura. So in the middle of the night, he came into the maternity room uh, of Mother Yashoda, and by Yoga Maya potency, everyone was also fast asleep. And Mother Yashoda herself, by the uh, exhaustion of child, of labor of childbirth, she had also fallen asleep, very deep asleep. And by Yoga Maya, she could also not remember whether or not she had given birth to a baby girl or a baby boy. So when Vasudev came into the maternity room, he saw the baby girl next to Mother Yashoda, and then he took Krishna and he placed him there in the place of the baby girl. But actually Yoga Maya was again acting. Why? Because actually Mother Yashoda had given birth to twins, a baby girl and a baby boy. But Vasudev could not see this, he did not understand. But really what had occurred 
was that original form of Krishna, uh, who is the son of Mother Yashoda. He absorbed within himself this baby that was being carried. This form of Krishna is his expansion, Vasudev Krishna. So Krishna absorbed that form into his own self because Krishna is the source of all avatars and all incarnations. He is the avatari. And so therefore all incarnations are within him eternally. Uh, so then Vasudev took the baby girl and he left and he came back to Mathura. He came into the uh, prison house of Kant and placed the chains again around his hands and legs. And now his uh, activity was completed. So the next morning, Kamsa came in and he was waiting very, uh, with bated breath, he was waiting because he was in terror that now the eighth child had taken birth. So when he came into the prison house, he saw that it was a baby girl and it was said that it would be a baby boy, it would be the son, the eighth son of Devaki that would kill, that would be the cause of his death. So when he came and he wanted to grab the baby girl from Devaki, oh, Devaki pleaded, no, no, please don't kill that girl. It was said that it would be a baby son, not a girl. But Kansa was so cruel and he grabbed the baby girl and as soon as he took the baby girl into his hands, he tried to dash him, her down to the stones. But what happened was, the baby girl slipped out of his hands and kicked him in the head, then flew up into the sky and manifested her form with twelve arms like Durga Devi and spoke to Kamsa, you fool Kamsa, you cannot kill me. Uh, but you don't know that the child, the child who was taken birth from Mother, Shur, from Mother Devaki, already he is somewhere else. So now Kamsa became very uh, depressed and now he was defeated after all these years of waiting and waiting. But now in Gokul, the next morning, it is very beautifully described in the Ananda Vrindavan Chambu, by Shiva Kavikaranapur, associated with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how on that morning Mother Yashoda had her first vision of her beautiful newborn sham colored Krishna, baby Krishna, and also how Nanda Maharaj was waiting outside of the maternity room and was ushered in uh, to see his newborn son. So when Mother Yashoda opened her eyes after sleeping and saw this beautiful baby child next to her, she began to look at all the different parts of his body. And it was all the different parts were just like very beautiful, delicate, soft lotus flowers, bluish and pinkish lotus flowers. And it looked to her as if this little child was a living lotus flower. And when Nanda Maharaj came into the maternity room a little bit later, all the elderly gopis, they ushered him in and congratulated him that now he had a newborn son. And Nanda Maharaj stood there completely stunned when he was looking at his newborn baby Krishna. And when he looked at Krishna, he saw that, oh, this little beautiful Krishna, he looks so beautiful bluish and blackish, like a, like a uh, brilliant sapphire gem. And he looked at all different parts of Krishna's body and looked like all different sapphire gems. And he thought, oh, this child is nothing but a manifestation of beautiful jewels. So Nanda Maharaj's heart was completely captivated by Krishna. And after Nanda and Yashoda, oh, then, then the elderly gopis, they described to Mother Yashoda how to breastfeed because she had not yet given birth to any child, although she was a little bit older. So they taught her how to breastfeed Krishna. And as she was looking at the beautiful face of her child and breastfeeding her beautiful child, milk was spurting out on the corners of Krishna's mouth, the breast milk, and was going down in little droplets. And Mother Yashoda was taking the corner of her sari and wiping the breast milk. But then she, she looked at the chest of Krishna, just on his chest, and it looked like there was some breast milk on his chest. So she tried to wipe it off, but it wasn't coming off. And again and again she was trying to wipe it. But actually, what was this? This was Krishna's eternal mark of Shrivatsa, golden, like the breast milk of Mother Yashoda. So, Nanda Maharaj was so joyful, just like we have this joyful kirtan right now. But imagine in this very place, this is Nanda Bhavan here. So in this very place, <coughs> all the rich bhastis who were living in Nanda's village, 
church here. They all came rushing to the house of God. They were carrying gifts in their hands, decorated beautifully with colorful servants. All the, all the ladies of the village were decorated with beautiful saris. And they were coming to celebrate this wonderful event of the king of Braja and his newborn son, Baby Krishna. And when they came, now the, all the musicians of Braja began to play musical instruments. All the dancers and singers, they were singing and dancing joyfully. Nanda ki ananda bayo jai kanaya lao ki. Nanda ki ananda bayo jai kanaya lao ki. And they were glorifying Nanda Maharaj. Oh, now you have this beautiful son, Nanda Lao. And uh, all the brahmanas were reciting very auspicious Vedic mantras, purifying the whole atmosphere. Nanda Maharaj gave two million cows, all decorated with beautiful golden ornaments, and, and their horns were gold plated, and their uh, on their bodies were the imprints of uh, handprints of the people who had mixed turmeric and auspicious oil and smeared all the bodies of the cows. And in this way, the whole atmosphere of Gokul in every house, it was decorated pure and clean. There were festoons and flags everywhere. So in this way, the joyous celebration of the birth of Sri Krishna took place just here. And in this way, Krishna became known as Nanda Nanda Krishna, Yashoda Nanda Krishna. And this is the eternal understanding that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught to us. He has said, Aradhyo Bhagavan Prajesh Tanayas Tattam Vrindam. That our worshipable Aradhya Dev, no other deity is worshipped by us other than who is that? The son of Maharaj Nanda, Prajesh Tanayas. And his land is this Vrindavan land. So this is the original place of the birth of Lord Krishna, all the pastimes of Krishna's childhood, from the killing of Putana witch, as you see on this mural on the wall here, killing of Trinavarta, all took place here until Krishna was three and a half years old. All of his beautiful childhood pastimes took place here, this place. Just before we came here, we stopped on the side of the road, and that is the place of Krishna's uh, pastime of being bound by Mother Yashoda. Because the, the room where the yogurt was hanging is just here in this vicinity. And when Krishna was being chased by Mother Yashoda with a stick in her hand, as we're hearing every single morning and evening in the Damodar Astakam, so Krishna was running, zigzag, running, running. And he ran so far away like that. And then Mother Yashoda finally caught him and performed the pastime of trying to bind Krishna, and this went on all afternoon because again and again they were bringing ropes, Krishna's belly could not be bound, and that was the place where finally she bound him to the grounding mortar, and the twin Arjuna trees were there, in that courtyard there, which was extended out from this palace, Nanda Maharaj's courtyard was very huge, and there uh, he, Krishna crawled, uh, pulling the grounding mortar in between the two twin Arjuna trees, and a huge loud cracking sound, and the two Arjuna trees crashed to the ground. That whole uh, episode took place there, and we heard the other morning from Sri Gurudev, the beautiful pastime of how Krishna was finally brought into Nanda Bhavan and reunited with Mother Yashoda. In this way, Iti Drik Swali Lavir Ananda Gurude, Swagosham Nimad Jantam Akya Payantam. In this way, Krishna's childhood pastime completely drowned all the inhabitants of Gokul in pools of ecstasy, Ananda Kunda. So we have come here, and here we are also remembering those pastimes, those blissful childhood pastimes of Sri Krishna, how he reciprocated with all the bridge bosses, and he taught everyone that only by praying, unalloyed praying, up in the mood of the bridge bosses, is he fully controlled and fully satisfied. So by the mercy of Sri Guru and Sri Garanga, and our beloved Guru Dev, following his guidance, we have come to Gopur Mahabharata, and this is our good fortune to also understand the truth of Krishna's eternal pastime, his jatra and his karma, and the Gita Krishna has told, Jatra karma chame dhidra, devam yoga gita tattvatara, jatra devam pura jama naiti, maam jiti samarjana.
If anyone understands his truth, of my birth, my jama, and all of my karma, my activities in this world, then he will no longer take birth in this material world, and he will come to me. He will come to me in my eternal glory of Thank you. 